Chernobyl nuclear accident uh, took place on April the 26th, 1986, which is now 20 more than 26 years ago. And uh, it was a result of an experiment of sorts, uh, a test which was being done on the reactor at Chernobyl, or one of the reactors uh, at Chernobyl, an experiment which went wrong. And uh, um, it was to test, in fact, uh, how best uh, to deal with an emergency. It was a test which was aimed at you know, finding out how to deal with an emergency, but uh, the test itself caused the emergency, which led to an explosion, which led to what is now called the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. There was widespread concern about the general safety of nuclear power plants. Um, there had been throughout the 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, a number of, of significant uh, nuclear accidents in the UK and, and in the United States and, and through Europe. Um, but obviously this one was the biggest catastrophe and the highest level catastrophe um, that, that had taken place um, that had a, a global impact as well as a regional impact. Um, so I think it brought attention to problems. Um, it brought more attention to concerns about the safety of Russian or Soviet uh, power plants at that time. And in terms of the immediate impact on the population, well, of course, you had a number of quite a few people living um, next to or close to the reactor, people who were involved in uh, servicing the reactor and uh, uh, the electrical power plant and so on and so forth associated with the reactor. One day after the accident actually took place, after the disaster, uh, most of the population from the immediate uh, uh, area was evacuated. Now, the other short-term impact was on uh, the, the individuals, a very large number of individuals who initially or soon after the disaster were involved in the cleanup operations. And there are estimates I've seen of close to half a million people who in one way or another were involved either soon after the accident or in the years after the accident in various phases of the uh, cleanup. The Chernobyl uh, reactor was a type that was reasonably common throughout the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe and they were all shut down as a result of Chernobyl and the Convention on Nuclear Safety. The Convention on Nuclear Safety said you had to make checks on your existing reactor fleet and if they were unsafe, you had to close them down. Well, uh, the Eastern Europeans did that almost straight away. The IAEA uh, re requires, needs governments to declare what is going on, to allow it in, to, to let it respond. The response of the Soviet government was to hide and deny. It did not have the capacity um, to respond as well as we might have hoped it to. It's done a lot to expand its abilities, but at that time, I think it was overwhelmed and also uh, under supported. The decision to make a large scale public announcement that has informed the Soviet uh, uh, public as a whole about the accident was taken only two days after the accident and after um, a radioactive cloud floated over Sweden um, and uh, the high levels of radioactivity were noticed by the Swedes who immediately re you know, pressed the panic button, what is going on? In a sense, the Soviet Union was forced to um, admit to what was going on, but only after there was outside uh, international reaction, a reaction on the part of Sweden and eventually uh, other countries as well. After Chernobyl, we realized that nuclear safety really wasn't all it should be. So uh, the international community got together and then negotiated several new agreements all of which gave the IAEA some role in their implementation. So we have the Convention on Nuclear Safety, which provides for countries to report periodically to review meetings on their improvements in nuclear safety. And then recommendations are made to each country to improve. So this is a good example of peer review and how effective that can be. Then there are a couple of uh, international treaties about accidents. Chernobyl was obviously the worst accident we'd had to that point. So the agency is given a role in uh, arranging with states in advance what they might contribute to help in the case of a nuclear accident. That's the Accident Assistance Convention. And then we have an Emergency Notification Convention as well, whereby states are supposed to notify the IAE as soon as there's some 
accident or incident or disaster and the agency will then uh, seek assistance for the state in distress and do all sorts of other things like issue um, commentary on how bad the accident is, what, make recommendations about what states should do about the consequences of the, the accident. So Chernobyl led to these improvements and the agency itself set up an emergency and incident centre which would spring into life once an accident happened. Uh, it arranged for states to be improving their own emergency preparedness and response capabilities. So in general trying to make uh, an accident less likely and if one happened to make the situation better.